So here we are starting off with the very first shelf. It is at the top of my bookshelves. Sorry if it is a bit like um, shaky and stuff. I'm using my phone, so I'm trying my best to keep it as still as I can. Um, but I would just I would just highlight a couple here on the shelves. Curse of Shadow and Thorns by J.L. Andrews. This is an independently published novel. Um, I got it when Amazon was having one of their Prime Day sales. And um, all I know is that it is about a fae and a viking. We of course, Realm Breaker by Victoria Aviar. The Shadow and Bone Trilogy by Lee Bardugo. Uh, the King of Scars Duology, also by Lee Bardugo. The Language of Thorns, also by Lee Bardugo. Thriller is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. I really enjoyed this one when I read it. I haven't read her other ones that she's come out with, but this one I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, the Cruel Prince, The Atlas Six. This is a fairy loot edition and it's gorgeous. I haven't read The Atlas Six yet. Um, everyone keeps going on about it. It's by Olive B. Blake. Everyone keeps going on about it, so I'm interested to see what it's like. Well, Law by Alexandra Bracken. We have The City of Brass and The Kingdom of Copper, both by S.A. Chakraborty. And then further on over here, we have... She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. We also have Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Chen. This is a fairy loot edition. Uh, one of the paperbacks of The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Trotsky. This is City of Bones. This is the, I think, it's one of the collector's editions. I think it might be the 15th uh year for collector's edition i knew i had to have it it's absolutely gorgeous and of course it's by cassandra claire um the rune edition of the lost book of the white and clockwork angel by cassandra claire and there's my little christmas tree i'm filming this in december <laughs> um so yes that is that whole upper shelf there this is all my fantasy books well some of my fantasy books and of course we're starting from A to C from last name. Um, this is what I like to call my Cassandra, well one of my Cassandra Claire shelves. Um, so as you can see here I've got all of kind of like my special editions and just some regular editions of Cassandra Claire's books. So we've got Lady Midnight and Lord of Shadows. These ones are an anniversary edition um, of them. This is the Fairy Loot edition of Chain of Iron. It is absolutely gorgeous. I got it second hand. Um, just look at how pretty that is. And then it's got moths on the spine. I haven't read the books yet. Um, I know that the third one is coming out in January, so I might wait until then and then just binge the entire series. I've also got this edition of Chain of Iron. This is a Fane edition. Again, I got it second hand and it's gorgeous. This is the front. This is the back here. Um, this is just, uh, this is an illustrated history of notable Shadow Hunters and Denizens of Jard World. It's just a picture book full of, again, all, <laughs> all the Shadow Hunters and downloaders of her series. This is Ghost of the Shadow Market. It is a um, series of short stories by uh, Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, Maureen Johnson, um, Kelly Link, and Robin Wisselman. Just about Brother Zachariah. And then as we move on over here, these are all um, of my mortal instruments. It is the ones with the sketch spines. So as you can see, we just have from City, uh, City of Glass, City of Ashes, City... Uh, <laughs> we've got City of Bones, City of Ashes, City of Glass, City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, and City of Heavenly Fire. I love these sketch spines. I just think that they're absolutely gorgeous. And if I had to pick a favourite out of um, this series, it would have to be City of Glass. And then as we move on over to here, I have one of my favourite book series of all time, and that is The Mortal Instruments. Um, so we have Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, Clockwork Princess. Again, in the sketch spines, I love The Infernal Devices. It, like I said, it is one of my favourite book series of all time. Um, I'm actually thinking about doing a reread of it because I loved it that much, and I honestly don't think I could pick a favourite. They hold a very, very special place in my heart, and I just, I'm so glad I, that I read them. And then last but not least, we have the Dark Artifices. So we have Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, and Queen of Erin Darkness. This is the Sketch Spines. As you can see, they are a little bit taller than the rest of these, which does bother me a little bit. But trying to find these editions is a nightmare. I'm sorry, I can't tell you where they're from because I got them for Christmas and my mum managed to hunt them down somewhere. So yes, that is my Cassandra Clare 
shelf that we've got going on there so here's the next shelf over so starting off with the little bits and bobs we have this candle it's from a stalker 10 points um it is an anej candle it's grapefruit lime and black currant it's also vegan and soy um i haven't burnt it yet as you can tell i just like keeping it here i think it's absolutely gorgeous um and then next we've got the icon the moment the queen itself the hunger games trilogy the trilogy that started it all started my love for reading <laughs> um fun fact i actually watched the movies first before reading the book so i had seen the hunger games and catching fire the movies loved them so much became obsessed realized that they were a book series um, and then read all three books and managed to finish Mockingjay the book before the two movies came out. Um, so that's my history with The Hunger Games. I love it so much. I will probably do a reread soon, but I really love it. And then we've got The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which uh, Legendborn by Tracy Dion. Absolutely love this one. Um, this is an Arthurian retelling. Um, I know that the second one has just come out. I haven't gotten it yet because <laughs> our circumstances have come up, but I haven't gotten it yet. But either way, I really loved Legend Born, and I'm so excited to see where Tracy Dion decides to go for the second one. And then we've got Twin Crowns by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber. I haven't read it yet, but this cover is absolutely gorgeous, and I actually haven't heard too many things about this. Um, a series that I feel like no one really talks about, Ace of Shades by Amanda Foody. This is the first one. This kind of has six of crows slash vegas type vibes um everyone has a superpower well kind of like a power and it's based on their bloodlines um and all that so it's quite interesting i haven't read the other two yet but i definitely plan on it because i really loved ace of shades but the gilded ones by namina fauna this one is the waterstones edition of Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. This is one of my favorite books of the year. So naturally, when Waterstones is coming out with this gorgeous edition, I knew I had to have it. So this is what it looks like here. I just haven't taken off that sticker. This is one of the flaps here. It says, Heroes Don't Get Happy Endings. And that is the back there. And then it says, They Don't Give Them to Other People. Ah, uh, sorry, They Give Them to Other People. Um, I love that edition. And I really hope that the second one comes out in one like that as well. And then we've got the second one in the series which I haven't had a chance to read yet but it is The Ballad of Never After by of course Stephanie Garber so this one is just the regular I think it's the UK version this one is and um I think that if you ordered a first printing of these they have something on the uh what's it called the naked hardcover and I got the dragon one I'm so happy I got a dragon. If you know me, I love dragons. I've always been super fascinated with them and their mythology. And I just, I absolutely love them. So the fact that I got the dragon is absolutely crazy to me. And I know that the dragon is very sought after. Yes, that is The Ballad of Never After. I haven't read it yet. I'm definitely planning on reading it. I'm definitely going to uh, read it very, very soon. Um, I think it's just I've been in a bit of a reading slump recently. But I am definitely planning on reading it soon. I'm very excited for it. And we'll see what Stephanie does. Garva decides to go because I couldn't believe how she left Once Upon a Broken Heart. So this shelf is relatively new. This is my favorite books shelf. Um, it's very much kind of in the middle where my eyeline is and it's broken up the rest of them. But for a while, I've been thinking about having like a favorite books shelf. Um, and I just thought, why not go ahead and do it? You know, it's my shelves. I can choose how I want to, um, set them up. And this is what I wanted. Now, I do want to mention not all of my favorite books are on here. And I will describe later once I've gone through them. But I'll come a little bit closer for you guys. So naturally, we have Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo and Crooked Kingdom. One of my favorite book series of all time. I absolutely adore it. Um, there's no question about it. <laughs> um, I've reread Six of Crows a number of times. I haven't reread Cooker Kingdom because of a certain scene. It's too heartbreaking and I have to be in the right mindset to deal with that. Uh, we've got Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber, which quickly became an instant favorite of mine. This is the Fairy Loot edition of Defy the Night by Bridget Kemmerer, which again became an instant favorite of mine for the year. Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco. I love this one. Also, another one of my favorites of the year. Um, it's going to be so hard for me to narrow down my list this year. But yeah, I love Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco. It was so good. I do have the other two. So I'm going to see how those ones go. But I thoroughly enjoyed this one. This one is a Fairy Loot edition. And just look at those edges there. They are absolutely gorgeous. 
Um, we have Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This one is the French edition. I can't speak or read French, but I love Sorcery of Thorns and I love Margaret Rogerson. And I was like, I want this edition. Thank you. And it's got deckled edges. It's gorgeous. It looks like an old library book. So that's what the front looks like. And there's the back. How can you pass that up? Um, we have Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson, which not a lot of people talk about, but it is so fucking good. I got an e-arc of it when it came out and I was entranced. It is amazing. This is just the original. I think it's a UK cover. Um, when I ordered it online, it is gorgeous. I love this book. If you're looking for a book that's got necromancy in it, um, it also does not have any romance in it either um and i think this is gonna be margaret rogerson's first series i'm not 100 percent sure but the way she left it off it definitely could be a series but if you have not read vespertine go ahead and do it and then of course we have my fairy editions of an ember in the ashes by suffer to here so we have an ember in the ashes a torch against the night uh, yeah a torch against the night a reaper at the gates and a sky beyond the storm um this is also one of my favorite series of all time i constantly go on about the series i love and adore it every single book is good i wouldn't say that there is one book that's like oh my god i have to like chug myself through this or whatever no i just feel like that they're all fantastic it wrapped up beautifully it hurts my emotions so much but in such a good way i love this book series with everything in me and everyone needs to read it <laughs> and then moving on over we have the song of achilles by madeline miller so this one was the i think it's the 10th anniversary edition of it or something um i read this i think last year i loved it i love the song of achilles i love greek mythology um so naturally i had to have this on my favorite shelf the night circus by erin morgenstern again another one of my all-time favorites i read it 2019 i think i read the night circus um this is the illumicrate edition it's absolutely gorgeous i mean just look at those edges there like oh um but yeah i loved the night circus i understand why it's not for everyone um but i really loved it it did come second hand i did get a little annoyed at the seller though because they told me it was in perfect condition and it's not it has a couple of scratches here but like Honestly, if you're going to sell a book secondhand, be honest with who you're selling it to. I did see photos and I think that they might have photoshopped it to look perfect because it arrived and it had scratches on it. And I was like, okay, those definitely didn't happen in transit. Um, but anyway, I'm happy that I have it and I absolutely love this book. And then we have one of my all-time favorites again, Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'm not going to lie, guys. I originally wasn't the biggest fan of this cover when it first came out. But it's grown on me. I love this book with all my heart. I think I've reread it twice. I'm definitely planning on doing another reread and probably timing it up. Um, but I really, really love Daisy Jones and the Six. I just think it's absolutely phenomenal. I haven't read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo yet, but I'm definitely planning on doing it. Um, but yeah, Daisy Jones and the Six is just chef's kiss 1000%. If you haven't read it, highly recommend. I would probably recommend reading the audiobook first though, because that is a whole other experience within itself. <laughs> Um, and last but not least, we actually, <laughs> we actually have a romance, which is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This one is the first book that I've ever tabbed up. And this, Emily Henry is the girl, she knows how to do it. I loved this book. I flew through it. It is phenomenal. It's just everything about it, you know, the angst and also, you know, uh, the kind of enemies to lovers. Also, we've got two characters who aren't interested in having children, but don't kind of let that define their whole lives in a way. Like, one of the main characters, Nora, her sister has children, and she loves them with her whole heart, but knows that she is not interested in having them herself. Um, so that was actually really, really nice to see. Nora, who is one of the main characters, is very headstrong, and people have said that she can be very infuriating, but I actually liked that. It's nice seeing that, particularly in a romance novel. Um, so I really love Book Lovers. I highly recommend it. And Emily Henry can do no wrong. So that is my favorite shelf. I'm actually really happy with it. 
Um, so like I said, not all of my favourites on here. So, for example, um, the Infernal Devices is one of my favourite series of all time. It's not on here because I wanted to keep it up with like all my sketch binds, uh, Cassandra Clare collection. So that's why that one's not up there. So far, that is my favourite series bookshelf. Just know some is missing. I am planning on putting them up there, but... For now, that's what it looks like. Alright, so here is the next shelf um, that we've got going on. So here I have got a Nina candle. It is also from that store called Ten Points. Um, it says it has caramel, coconut, creamy vanilla. Again, vegan and soy. You can tell I haven't written this one either. Um, Nina is my favourite character from Six of Crows. So I had to have a candle. <laughs> um, so here, as you can see, this is again fantasy books. Um, so here we've got The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. I know, another edition. This one is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. It is signed by Stephanie Garber. There we go. Boom. Um, I mainly got this one because I pre-ordered it ages ago and I forgot that I had pre-ordered the regular edition. So I was like, well, I'm getting the Barnes & Noble one anyway, whatever. I'll just have that on my shelf. And then the other edition came in the mail and I was like, well, looks like I have two of them now. So uh, yeah, this is the gorgeous Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. Um, oh, <laughs> we have Caravel by Stephanie Garber. Everything's packed in pretty tight here. Uh, we have One Dark Window by Rachel Gilliag. Uh, this is the Fairy Loot edition of it. It is chef's kiss. This is gorgeous. When I opened this in my Fairy Loot box, I was gobsmacked. Your girl was shook because I could not believe how gorgeous this is i haven't heard anyone talk about it i haven't heard anyone uh that's read it so i'm interested to see what it's like i think it's a very kind of like gothic tale so i'm really interested to see whether i like it or not um also it's got this gorgeous like green sprayed edges here um we've also got belladonna by adeline grace um, this is also the Fairly edition of this, another one where my jaw literally dropped when I saw it because I think it's that gorgeous. Um, this is the sprayed edges for that one. Um, this one is another kind of gothic one as well and I'm really interested to see what it's like. Um, we've got Fair Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong. This one is the Waterstones edition of it. Um, I don't think it's signed but the undercover has this. I mean look at that. Look at it. It's stunning. Um, so yes, I saw that like underneath and I was like, I must have it. This one is the Waterstones edition of it. Um, I haven't read her other series, the uh, These Violent Delights, that, that duology, yet I am planning on it. But from what I know, you don't have to read those ones in order to read this one. So that's totally fine. Another one I'm very excited for. I just want to highlight this one as well. This is The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gonacek. I want to highlight this one because it is a mythology retelling, but it is a Loki retelling. Uh, an, an, an Angra Borta, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, retelling, uh, which is Norse mythology. And I don't feel like Norse mythology and other mythology retellings get the same kind of uh hype as other retail as like greek re uh retellings do so that's why i wanted to highlight that so if you're looking for a very good like loki slash greek uh sorry is it loki slash uh norse mythology retelling we've got uh talon by julie kagawa my just regular edition of defy the night by bridget camera which Ooh. <laughs> which you all know I love and my regular edition of Defend the Dawn by Bridget Camera, which I finished recently and fucking loved this one is the second one in the series the third one hasn't been announced yet and I will literally sell my soul to get an arc of that book I need the third one announced I need it in my life and apparently Bridget Camera can't give me a moment of happiness so um I just keep the regular edition here because it's with my regular edition and I was very lucky to get my hands on the Fairly edition. So once that comes in, it will be with my favourite shelf. Um, and then I have the Bookish Box edition of Defy the Night. I got this one secondhand because I refuse to purchase from the Bookish Box considering everything that's gone on with them. Um, so yes, this one is the Bookish Box one. It's also very gorgeous. If they come out with Defend the Dawn, I probably won't get it because like I said, I don't want to purchase from them. But either way, it's still nice to have on my shelf. Hey everyone, so we have my next fantasy shelf. So starting from over here, I have Guild and Glow by Raven Kennedy. I haven't started this one yet. Um, this Glow edition is the Goldsboro limited edition one. Um, so it's got black sprayed edges and 
it is signed by the author. I've got 935. Um, to be honest, I don't know if I want it anymore because it just took so long to get here. And this was more of like, oh, I need it like impulse buy. But now that it's arrived, I'm like, I don't know if I want it anymore. Like I said, I haven't even read the first book. And the cover isn't different from the like original paperback anyway so I'm a bit like well I don't know I'm still making up my mind as to whether I want to keep it or not but just know that one's very up in the air but I have that one anyway and then I have The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune, The Poppy War by Arv Kwong which I read last year and really really enjoyed Um, I also have The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang, which is the second one in that series that I have not read yet, but I'm definitely planning on it. And then I have Babel by R.F. Kuang, which was an unfortunate victim of my, I don't know what I want to read and I'm just going to pick up and put down everything. <laughs> um, but from what I did read, I was enjoying it. So it's definitely like not a permanent DNF. It was just, I was going through a time where I was like, I just am not in the mood and don't know what to read and it was just nothing was grabbing my attention so but this one is definitely on the plan and i've heard nothing but good things about it so just know not a permanent dnf um the Greenbone saga series so we have jade city jade war and jade legacy all by funda lee i'm currently reading jade war it's just because it is an adult high fantasy it's a complicated world to get into and it's not easy for me to understand it or comprehend it either so it's taken me a really long time um moving over here i will explain what's going on here um only a monster by vanessa lynn which i did not enjoy Throne of Glass and Air of Fire by Sarah J Mass. Um, so obviously the this one is a first and the third one. So I read the first one for a, a specific video that I haven't finished yet. So it's not out yet. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say for that. So that's why I have that one. And then I have Air of Fire. These ones are not easy to get as hardcovers in Australia. And I prefer the hardcovers over the paperbacks. I just think that they look more sleek and that they're gorgeous. So at the moment, I was only able to grab Throwing Across an Air of Fire. I'm definitely hoping to grab um, the rest of them. It's just they are pricey and not easy to get. And then I have the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. So I have A Court of Thorns and Roses, A Court of Mist and Fury, A Court of Wings and Ruin, A Court of Frost and Starlight, and A Court of Silver Flames by, of course, Sarah J Mass. My best friend got these for me as a box set for my birthday this year. I've read A Court of, a Court of Thorns and Roses and I did enjoy my time. It wasn't the best thing that I've read, but I did enjoy it. Um, and I'm definitely planning on moving to A Court of Mist and Fury. It will be for the same video as this. You can probably guess who, uh, what the video might be. But anyway, um, I'm definitely planning on reading this. But these are the A Touch of, a touch of Magic Dust Jackets because... I didn't want the other dust jackets on my shelves. I just thought that they were so ugly and I was like, no, I don't want them. So I brought these ones and now they're on my shelf. So that is another fantasy shelf all summed up for you. As you can see, it is mainly just Sarah J Mass. But... So next, my next fantasy shelf. First of all, starting off with the bits and, bits and bobs. I have this toothless pop vinyl here. It's very cute. It just looks like this. I got it from Supernova. Um when I went with my best friend this year as I love How to Train Your Dragon so I was like well I need a toothless pop vinyl. And then I have this hardcover edition of Crescent City House of Sky and Breath. I don't have the first one yet because I need to find it in this edition of the hardcover but I saw this at um, a bookstore and was like yep yeah, I'm gonna take full advantage of that. Um, Circus of Wonders by Elizabeth McNeil which I haven't read yet but has an absolutely gorgeous cover here. Um, Shatter Me and Unravel Me by Tahara Mafi. I have read Shatter Me and really enjoyed it. And again, Unravel Me became part of my I don't know what I want to pick up um, thing I had going on. So I'm a little bit into that one. Uh, we've got This Woven Kingdom by Tahara Mafi, which is one of her newest releases. Haven't read it yet. This is the Waterstones edition of that. And then we have the Serpent and Dove trilogy by Shelby Mahone. So we have Serpent and Dove, Blood and Honey, and Gods and Monsters. Um, so I read Serpent and Dove and I really enjoyed it. I read Blood and Honey, did not enjoy it one bit. But I thought, I am this far into it, I may as well get the third and final one. I have not read Gods and Monsters yet. It is definitely on the list eventually. I am just scared to read it because of everything that happened in Blood and Honey and the fact that I did not enjoy Blood and Honey at all. 
so I'm a little bit scared. But yes, there is that shelf with my little toothless pot vinyl. There is that shelf. Alrighty, so here we are for my next shelf. So we have uh, the gorgeous fairy loot edition of Kingdom of the Curse by Kerry Maniscalco. This is what it looks like here. And this is the stenciled edges. I am lucky enough where I managed to get the third one off someone. So once that comes out, it'll be sent into my house. And then I have the Barnes & Noble edition of Kingdom of the Feared, which is actually the third one. Um, yeah, this one is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. So I just thought I may as well just put it next to that one. Uh, um, we've got the Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, The Last Graduate by Naomi Novik. This one was a gift that I got last year for Christmas and the person didn't realize that it was the second one in the series but that's totally okay crown of feathers by nikki paro preto which i haven't read yet um one of my all-time favorites sorcerer of thorns by margaret rogerson i love that book um we've also got another one of my all-time favorites and that's why it's face out and that's a vesper time by margaret rogerson i'm not going to go too much into them because i talk about them for my favorite shelves but again i absolutely love it and this is the our crate edition and it is gorgeous We've got The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson, which I have not read yet, but heard nothing but amazing things about. League of Liars by Astrid Schultz. This one was a gift that I got. A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab. Um, I don't have the rest of them, and I don't know if I'm actually going to read the series, so I'm hoping to get rid of it. Uh, this Savage Song by V.E. Schwab. I haven't read the second one yet, and I don't know if I will. Um, just coming on over here, this is a little gingerbread Christmas house that I've got going on here, because obviously when I'm filming this, it is December. But I feel like it's very, very cute. It does light up, but I'm not going to turn it on now, but it's very cute. So we're just going to move him over there. Um, we've got Castle in Their Bones by Laura Sebastian, which is one of my most anticipated releases of the year. It's an absolutely gorgeous cover. Like, just look at that. I feel like no one's talked about this book. We've also got A Touch of Darkness by Scarlet St. Clair, which is a Hades and Persephone retelling. This one, again, became a victim of my I don't know what I want to pick up um, kind of moment I had. I was really enjoying it when I did read it. And then, of course, we have An Ember in the Ashes, A Torch Against the Night, and Every Bread the Gates by Suffered to Heal, which is the first three in the Ember in the Ashes quartet. So yes, that is another one of my fantasy shelves. I actually really like this shelf. All right, everyone. So this is the end of my fantasy collection slash the start of my sci-fi. Um, so as you can see, we have A Sky Beyond the Storm by Supper to Here, which is the fourth and final book in the Ember and the Ashes series. We have A Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. And then we also have Stranger Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares, both by Lainey Taylor. I really loved um, Stranger Dreamer. Um, Muse of Nightmares I didn't enjoy as much, but I still thought that it was really good. Um, I just think it's a really well done duology. Um, we've also got Illuminate by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This one is actually signed by Jay Kristoff because I met him recently at a comic book convention. So it says for Ashley, fight like a girl. And then that's Jay Kristoff's uh, signature there. And then this is also the Aurora Cycle. So we've got Aurora Rising, Aurora Burning, and Aurora's End. Again, by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Um, I only got Aurora Rising um, signed by Jay Kristoff again at that same thing. And then it just says for Ashley, and that's his signature there. I haven't read this series yet, but I'm definitely planning on doing it. And my best friend keeps telling me that I need to. Um, and then we have Cinder by Marissa Meyer, which is a... Cinderella retelling and I just think it's really well done. So on to my next um, sci-fi shelf. First of all, I'll start off with this little decoration. As you can see, it's just a reindeer. Um, I just put him there, but we'll move him out of the way for the time being. So we have Scarlet by Marissa Meyer, which is of course a Little Ray Riding Hood retelling. Um, we have Ferris by Marissa Meyer as well, um, which is a novella following, I think it's called Queen Levana from um, the Lunar Chronicles. We have Renegades and Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. I thoroughly enjoyed Renegades when I read it. It gives very kind of Marvel, the Umbrella Academy type vibes. And if you're really into those two things, I think you might enjoy Renegades. Um, I haven't had the chance to read Arch Enemies yet, but I'm definitely planning on it. Uh, War Girls by Tochi Onyabuchi. Vicious by V.E. Schwab, which I really, really enjoyed. This book is definitely worth all the hype. It is fantastic. 
Uh, this one, on the other hand, Vengeful, which is kind of the companion novel, is not worth it. I still have nightmares about a certain scene that happens in this. It is so graphic. It is so horrific. Um, and I read it last year sometime, but like I said, I still have nightmares about it and I will never ever pick up that book ever again. Um, we have the Scythe trilogy, so we had Scythe, Thunderhead and The Toll. These are by Neil Shusterman, a fantastic kind of, um, kind of like utopian, I, some people have called it utopia, some people have called it dystopia, um, series about how humans have conquered death and they need some way to keep the human population under control so they have these people called scythes that go around and kill these people um every once in a while so that the human population doesn't get too much um it's really good if you haven't read it i highly recommend it and then of course i have another set uh the side i have another set of the side series by neil schusterman these are the fairy Loot editions so these are actually turned around because i think that they're gorgeous so here's our side this is one of the main characters on the front here and then that's the spine there um yeah and it's absolutely gorgeous i turned mine around i don't think a lot of people have but i absolutely love these covers i just think that they're really gorgeous here's thunderhead um, there's that spine there, and the toll, so yes, um, and I'm pretty sure that they're all signed by Neil Schusterman as well, um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the side series, so I was like, when Fairly announced theirs, I was like, I have to get it. Um, and then Ninth House Billy Bardugo, which I also really enjoyed. It's so graphic, but she did so well with this novel that I just thought that it was fantastic. Um, and I'm definitely excited for the sequel with Hellbent. Um, as you can see, we're getting into like my mystery thriller type section. Um, so of course I was starting with Ninth, with Ninth House. And then we get into the Diviner series by Libba Bray. So these are the fairy loot editions of the Diviners. So we have the Diviners. It has this, which is actually the original cover, like a uh, cover design that was printed on the first edition of the Diviners. And then here is the spine. So it's just plain black. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then on this shelf, we also have Layer of Dreams, which is the second one. Um, as you can see right there, it just has some tarot cards and, again, black spray edges. Alrighty, everyone. So this is my next kind of uh, mystery thriller shelf that we got going on here. So, um, as you can see, this is book three from the Diviners series, which is Before the Devil Breaks You. It is, of course, still the Fairy Loot edition. It has a top hat uh, there, along with black sprayed edges. And then we've got the last and final one, which is book number four, The King of Crows. And, of course, it has crows there and black sprayed edges. Um, and then this one is just a regular paperback of the Diviners. This is how I originally read the first Diviners book. Um, I will probably unhaul it at some time because I have these editions. But yeah, that one's just a regular paperback. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, which I read uh, this year and really enjoyed. Um, Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. Another one that I really enjoyed. Um, and then we have the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. So we have Stalking Jack the Ripper, Hunting Prince Dracula, and Escaping from Houdini, um, which is uh, all from Carrie Maniscalco. I don't have the fourth one yet, um, which is Capturing the Devil. I just, I can't find it in these ones. And every time I go to the bookstore to look for it, they never have it. So hopefully one day I can find it. It's just really hard to track down for some reason, the fourth one. Um, but hopefully I'll have it eventually. But I really enjoy the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I thought it was really good. And I feel like the audiobooks are definitely the way to go for these ones. Um, my favourite is definitely Hunting Prince Dracula. Not only is this cover stunning, but this book is really, really well done. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy that series and hopefully I can get my hands on the fourth one physically soon. And then we have One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus, which I also really enjoyed. I did read one of kind of like the companion novels and didn't enjoy that so much. So that's why I don't have a physical copy of it and just kind of happy with One of Us is Lying. So this is uh, my very bottom shelf of my bookshelves. Um, so obviously we've got a very kind of mixture of genres starting here. So we've got 
um, If We Were Villains by Emil Rio. We've also got Gallant by V.E. Schwab, which I was so disappointed by and I did not like at all. Um, we've got one of my favourite books of all time, um, The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, which is obviously on my favourite shelf. So We've also got Galatea by Madeline Miller, which is a short story about Galatea. And when I purchased it, I didn't realise, but it's actually signed when I can find where it is. There, there we go. <laughs> There's a signature there. Um, but yeah, it came in the book when I purchased it from my local bookstore. Um, we also have Circe, which I really like by Madeline Miller as well. I will read anything Madeline Miller puts out. Um, I'm just overall love Madeline Miller. She's fantastic. Uh, the Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. We also have The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner, which was another victim of my pick up and put down. It was just something I was going through at the time. Um, into illness, am I right? And then we have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which I didn't hate, but I didn't love. Um, yeah. And then we have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, which I also did not like. It was, don't get me wrong, I think it is beautifully written. It has some amazing quotes. And there were some that did hit me hard in here. But overall, it was just so boring. Um, and I feel like it's vastly overrated for what it is. We also have The Book Thief by Marcus, by Marcus Zusak, which I haven't read, but I have seen the movie. So obviously I know what happens. Um, and then we're moving on to my contemporary section. So we've got Kate and Waiting by Becky Albertelli and Abundance of Catherine's and The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Um, Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert, which everyone has read except for me. As you can see, there is a little bit of a bookmark here because this one was another victim. <laughs> um, we've also got It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I refuse to put this in my romance section because it is not a romance book. We, of course, have my little um labrador plush here that my dog likes to steal um every once in a while but yeah i've had this thing for a really long time um we're just gonna move it over here we've also got uh you should see me in a crown by leah johnson um that one's actually a really good book and i feel like it's very underrated we've also got a very large expense of sea and an emotion of great delight both by tahara Murphy, which i feel like a great contemporary they are very hard hitting especially an emotion of great delight the main character in here is suffering from depression and i honestly think i went through a bit of a depressive slump in my life after reading this because it is so hard hitting and just very sad so if you have depression and you are not in the right state of mind do not read this you have to be in the right state of mind to read this book um so i'm just going to put a trigger or warning on for that but it is a really great one. We've also got Loveless by Alice Oseman, which is also a really great one. Um, oh, <laughs> this is what we want here. Um, I really enjoyed this. Um, it has a, a romantic, asexual main character in it. So if you are looking for that representation, then this one is the way to go. Uh, Fangirl by Rainbow Rao. We've also got This Song Will Save Your Life by Le Leia Sales. Uh, we've got Concrete Rose, The Hate You Give, and On The Come Up, all by Angie Thomas. All fantastic, really great books. Uh, we've got The Love Hypothesis and Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. I actually preferred uh, Love on the Brain. Um, as you can tell, we're getting into the romance section now. I actually preferred Love on the Brain to The Love Hypothesis. I did enjoy The Love Hypothesis, but as like a whole, I enjoyed Love on the Brain more. Um, and then we've also got... Um, the Queen, the Icon, the Moment herself, Emily Henry, uh, this is Beach Read, another one that I really enjoyed and just overall fantastic. So yes, there is a mixture of my mystery thrillers, historical fiction, contemporary and a little bit of romance kind of all on one shelf there. Right, so we've come to the last shelf. This is a mixture of romance and um classics also we've got a little bear here that i got for my graduation um oh my god how long ago now i think close to about seven years ago is when i graduated so yeah um, i'm talking about my high school graduation um so yeah it's a little teddy bear and i just keep him there so we've got you and me on vacation by emily henry which unfortunately i did not enjoy 
at all <laughs> um also ugly love goes here just pretend it's here it's in my living room i was literally just reading it and forgot to bring it in so please just pretend ugly love by colleen hoover is here um we've got twisted love by anna huang which i've heard mixed things about but i'm interested to see what i think about it um we've got a recent re which is a merry little meet cute by julie murphy and sierra simone which i did not enjoy ended up dnfing um, All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven, which is, of course, a lot of people know about. Um, it, it, it is sort of a romance book as well, but it talks a lot about mental illness. We've got One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston, um, which was okay, um, in my opinion. Um, one of the main characters is bisexual, and the other one is a lesbian. We've also got some trans representation in here as well. Um, so, a great book for representation, but... I just thought it was pretty eh. Um, we have got Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which I have not read yet. And I haven't heard too many things about, so I'm interested to see what that one is like. Uh, You've Reached Sam by Dustin Tao, which I thought was okay. Um, I don't have many strong feelings on it. Um, so this is Love by Elizabeth Lim, which is a Cinderella retelling. And it is What If Cinderella Never Tried on the Glass Slipper. Um, I know that this one isn't a romance or anything. This is more of a middle grade. So I just kind of keep it here. Um, just because I feel like I, like I don't have any other middle grades. Um, at least none that I want to keep here. So I just thought, well, since it's like a middle grade, I'll just keep it in between my romance and my classics. Um, and then moving on to the classics, we have Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, which is this absolutely gorgeous cover, which I did actually really enjoy. I listened to it as an audiobook because I find it really hard to understand classics physically so i listened to it as an audiobook and really enjoyed it but i absolutely love the colors on here um we also have jane eyre by charlotte bronte which is another one that's super gorgeous um the mina lima edition of alice's adventures in wonderland and we also have um this gorgeous cover of the great gatsby by f scott fitzgerald which i got off book depository if i can remember all right so here is the top of my little cubed bookshelves that i have here so this is the top section here as you can see there's just a painting that my nana did um because i can't stick it up on the wall so i leave it there and then we have a little pop vinyl this is spider-man from marvel it's uh tom holland's spider-man he just kind of stays there i'm not much of a funko pop collector anymore but he just chills over there i've got this cup holder here that's got um all of my tabs in it that i absolutely love it's got one of my favorite pens this is from charlie and fox and like okay this is gonna sound super random but I love this pen because it's super easy to hold in my hand and it feels really comfortable. Um, so that's why it's one of my favourite pens. So that stays in there. What else have we got in here? Just some other little random bits. Oh, and the a ticket from the Sky Bus from when I went to Melbourne back in 2019 because we don't have anything like that here. So yeah, that was quite interesting. So I like to keep that. Um, and then we've got an affirmation thing here that says make time for things that make you feel alive i just have had that since i used to do my affirmation things and haven't changed it um i'm not much into that kind of stuff anymore but that just kind of chills over there and then just laying here we have my umbrella academy uh volume one graphic novel edition because it does not fit anywhere else um so let me just oh god it is so heavy <laughs> So yes, this is the Umbrella Academy Apocalypse Suite. It is a graphic novel by Gerard Way and Gabriel Barr. I really just adore this one. It is so heavy, but I love the hardcover of it. I think it's gorgeous. I haven't gotten the rest yet because they are super expensive, but I'm definitely planning on getting the rest, especially because season four is going to start filming soon and I'm very excited um, for it. I'm just like, bring it on. Let's see what happens. But this is just kind of what some of the art looks like on the inside here. <laughs> so yeah that's that one he just kind of chills there until i can find a better spot so for it now we are on to my graphic novels <laughs> as you can see i don't have a lot of them um i just kind of got into graphic novels this year um so we have heartstopper by alice oseman volumes one to four i actually read these originally on webtoon 
Um, I read them all in a single day and of course I had to get the physical copies because I just loved them so much. I'm eagerly awaiting uh, volume 5 to come out which I think might be the final volume in the Heartstopper series. And then we have A Spark Within the Forge by Sabah Tahir, which is an Ember in the Ashes graphic, graphic novel. <laughs> it takes place um, before the events of the first An Ember in the Ashes book, and we follow Lyra and her brother Darren. So yes, those are all my graphic novels. Um, I am definitely planning on getting some more throughout oh, next year because I've turned into a graphic novel girly now. So the next shelf is um, just full of my book sleeves and some of the spoiler cards and author letters from my fairy loot boxes that I get. So as you can see here, these are the art prints slash spoiler cards that I've gotten from uh, fairy loot. Uh, pictures and, and an Ember in the Ashes one that I got in the Fae Crate Hangover box. Yeah, they all just kind of stay here because I have nowhere else to put them. And then these are all of my book sleeves. I've also got my book light in here. Um, this is a Song of Achilles. Uh, it's just kind of like a TBR book holder thing. Um, I just like keeping all my book sleeves in here because it just keeps it organized. I've also got my pin banner here as well because it always falls off. My book light and just a couple of my book sleeves that I've got in there. This one is uh, from, I think it was Fairy Loot. This one was a Fairy Loot one. In the Atlas 6, it's the original um, cover that they came out with before it was traditionally published. Um, it was from a fairy loot box and my best friend gave it to me because she didn't want it. Uh, she doesn't use book sleeves as much as I do so she was like I don't want to go into waste, did you want it? And I was like sure, no worries. So yeah, that is that shelf there. Alrighty everyone, so here is the, <laughs> sorry that was my graphic novels that just fell. Um, here is my classic slash uh, Percy Jackson shelf. I This is actually my fourth shelf. I've skipped this one because it's got some paperwork on it. Um, that I can't really put away and that I need to keep out for just personal reasons and everything like that. And there's nothing really that important on there. But we're up to here. So we've got uh, Grimm's Fairy Tales and The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I recently got this one and I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a Cartwell, uh, sorry, yeah, the Cartwell Classics one. I just thought it was absolutely gorgeous. So I was like, I need this classic in my life. And then, of course, I have these editions of Percy Jackson and The Lightning Thief. Um, so we have The Lightning Thief, Sea of Monsters, The Titan's Curse, The Battle of the Labyrinth, and The Last Olympian. Um, I wanted to read these before the show comes out and I wanted to get these editions before they change it. Um, because they most likely will because the show is coming out very soon. I love these editions, they're so pretty. I've only read The Lightning Thief for the moment, I haven't read the rest, but I'm very excited because I really enjoyed it. And I really love Greek mythology as well, so winner. Alright, so I'm not going to go too much into the shelf here, but this is basically just my Harry Potter shelf. So we've got the, we've got, oh, there is some dog hair there. <laughs> um, we've got two of the, uh, what are they called? Illustrated editions. I had a moment. Um, so we've got the Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets. And then we have uh, books one through two, seven, of course. So that includes the Philosopher's Stone, the Chamber of Secrets, the Prisoner of Azkaban. We have also got the Goblet of Fire, the Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, and the Deathly Hallows. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, so yeah, that's my Harry Potter shelf. I just like having a separate shelf for this series, but yeah, that's it. Right, so here we are at the very, very last shelf on this 2022 book shelf tour. So as you can see, I have the Maze Runner series by James Dashner. I don't keep them on my regular shelf because there was a scandal that came out about him that was not very great. You can probably Google it to find out what it was, um, but it wasn't great. And I'm not going to talk to, and I'm not going to go into it. But yes, um, I've got the Maze Runner series. They are personally um, signed to me because I met him before the scandal came out at a comic book at a comic book convention uh, a couple of years ago but like I said it was before that stuff came out about him so now they just kind of stay here um, and then I've got this sign in here that says let your dreams blossom that I don't remember where it is and a little bit of paper on how to work my microphone which I know how to work now so that's all fine um, and my microphone would go here it's just because I filmed a video before here so I uh, before filming this one so I just haven't put it back yet um, but yes we are at the final shelf now 
you guys enjoyed my 2020 my 2022 bookshelf tour so thank you guys so much for watching happy reading and i'll see you soon for a new video bye